given permission to use their voice to use as training data sets as opposed to the wild west of AI platforms using unethical data scraping methods to replicate and synthesize voices without permission. <sighs> yeah, that sounds like a mouthful right there. <laughs> are you familiar with the whole reason of the, the strike and the AI? I'm kind of familiar. Okay, so, so the essential part of it is that a lot of uh, video game companies and a lot of movies are want to use AI, especially voice actors, as they give permission to record their voice once, and by using AI, then all of a sudden you can replicate that and put those voices in the game without paying the actual people doing the job. And they were, and the SAG went on strike because they didn't want people to be used as a tool, right. as opposed to being hired to do your job. Exactly. The, the vote came through, it got passed, the deal was in, and now all of a sudden, the SAG who is going against them have joined forces with an AI company mm -hmm. to yeah, have this happen. It's, it's a little shicey. Yeah, it's a little contradiction right there. Right, so it's, it's, it's not in their best interest to team up with a guy who they were fighting against. Yes. And especially now because one but of the I issues, mean, they probably got tired of fighting because it was 118 days that they were on strike for, yeah. but you figure if you're gonna go 118 days, you might as well come out winning. My, yeah, but then it's just like the money and then the, like the cost of living. I mean, some of them are living in California and New York. Correct. And you, the top most expensive cities in the United States. Correct. Bills are gonna catch up. I mean, I don't know about you, but I know <laughs> when my bills are, <laughs> are calling my name, I gotta do what I have to do <laughs> to but make sure they get paid. If you think about it, the fact that they're going to use their voice one time, they only get paid for one session, as opposed to getting the job for doing the entire voice session, that yeah. was the issue. So now, right. uh, they're only going to be able to do one session. They do, like I'm doing right now, I'm recording my voice, mm -hmm. that's it. And they can use my voice however they want later on in the video games, as opposed to me coming in every week to do my job. What's an interesting point is that, if you think about it, Burn it where, all down. <laughs> <laughs> where the contract is in such a way that if you decide you don't want to consent to have your voice being digitized and used by AI, mm -hmm. they'll just find somebody else. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are going to be out of work yeah. because they don't want to agree to this quote-unquote victorious agreement that they all quote-unquote agreed to. Right. Oh man, Jenny Feldy. Yeah. What so do you think? Just to confirm, because I'm here late. Uh, can't we're here late from the South. That's my cowboy hat. So did they approve this? This AI agreement is this. This is this yes. Was this is about, approved by so I'm the SAG. First from you. Yes, by SAG and um, the company, uh, which is I already forgot the name, Replica Studios. So they that's have it. Uh, that's it. As an actor, I mean, not me, but whatever. You go in, record once, and that's the deal. Well, that's that's, that's what it. they're allowing people. That you're wow. being fairly compensated. This is very new. Yes, it's very new. All right. Just announced. What are they paying wow, them? Yeah. Like, is the payment going up? It's I mean? quote unquote fairly compensated. So <laughs> that's also up to interpretation for each contract. This is so, so timely, and this is exactly what I've been talking about all week, and two got? people kind of got mad because they thought I was being negative Nancy, and I've been warning people, if you follow my social media, I said, listen, the world is changing, just like the music, you know, musicians, uh, yeah. that whole fell, we saw that years ago. So we saw that, we get it, we know, but humans, a lot of times we don't have foresight, something has to happen for us to get it, and then maybe 10 years we'll get it, mm -hmm. all week. I know one person is not happy because they follow the mainstream SAG way of acting. I don't follow mainstream anything. What am I doing here? This is not mainstream. I'm not mainstream, okay? Hey. I'm not Cat Williams, but I'm pretty out there, okay? <laughs> so, yeah, I've been telling people this, and I think a lot of actors, I, I didn't know this was going to happen so soon, are going to have their, their face smacked, and they're going to be gobsmacked, and uh, the old model of applying to these shows is, is out, and... Being a TV star is a really dumb goal for most people. I can keep going, but yeah, no, it happened sooner than I thought. Wow, I thought we had a couple of weeks or months or years. No, it's, 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 it's fast. And like I said, yeah. the fact that they yeah. agreed yeah. to it and now all yeah. of a sudden there's a deal not too much later, this is very, very shifty in my mind. I think a lot of people are, are going to be very surprised, uh, people I know. <laughs> so moving yeah. on, wow. from yeah, the to be fair, the other guy just said a bad thing years ago and got fired the partner. After being found guilty of, quote, two misdemeanor counts of harassment and assault, unquote, which in New York is not a crime, but considered a violation, more like a traffic ticket, none other than actor Jonathan Majors was fired from his multi-movie deal with Marvel Studios. 
jurors acquitted Jonathan of intentional assault in the third degree and second degree aggravated harassment, which were the major, no pun intended, charges. <laughs> the sentencing hearing is set for February 6th of 2024, and it is possible, however unlikely, that Jonathan could be sent to jail for up to a year. For those of you not paying attention, or care for that matter, Jonathan was arrested due to his now ex alleging that he forcefully retrieved his phone from her, causing, quote, an excruciating injury to her right middle finger, and while she exited her car, hit her on the back of her head, and then tried to force her back into the car, causing a cut behind the ear. Jonathan says, mm, not great. I was reckless with her heart, not with her body. My hands never struck a woman, ever. I shouldn't have been in the car. I shouldn't have stepped out on this relationship. I shouldn't have been in this relationship. If I'm not in the car, none of this is happening. If I leave the relationship, none of this is happening. If I'm man enough and brave enough to say, I want to see somebody else, or I'm done now, I'm not in that car, we're not here, I'm responsible for those things. Since his arrest, Jonathan has been dropped by his talent manager, his publicity firm, has been fired off of many projects prior to the court case with only Marvel playing the wait and see approach that has now that the axe has fallen. Now, I saw the video oh, of the incident. Did well, you guys see this no. video? Jen didn't oh, see it. Mohina, did you see I it? I saw a clip of it where like she was running. <laughs> They're after him. After him. Right. Oh. So I don't I love Jonathan maybe <laughs> I do, but I do also, like it's like, it's like, dang, dang, like, you know, like, you know, like, I, I was rooting for you, because, like, I can't say, who's to say, like, what she's saying is wrong, or untruthful, but then I'm just like, dang, like, <laughs> why, yeah. so, um, but, yeah, I saw it, and the videos weren't, it, like, you, like you said before, videos are, like, they're clear, but they're not always clear, right, so you don't, like, there's no real audio of it yet, as far as I know, and you can't, so like, what she may be saying that happened could have happened or it didn't happen, but I, I wouldn't know. But, but as far as I've seen the camera, he, he's kind of guilty. He's but not, he, not got, guilty. He, got acquitted. <laughs> he got acquitted from the major intentional assault. He's only got in trouble for a misdemeanor of, taking, of getting his phone back from her mm -hmm. and hurting her finger and hurting her ear by trying to get the phone away from her and then running away like the road runner from this man for blocks in the video he's running for blocks from this lady he's chasing after him yeah it's the craziest i've never thought that this man would be running from that woman mm -hmm. it's 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 almost comical you, 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 seeing you, you, the video but have you ever heard like there's nothing like a woman scorn so yes like, yes and, so like <laughs> i've you, lived that you, you, <laughs> so imagine like you could be this big stocky guy but let that let your woman be upset at yeah, you yeah. you're right. running because you know she's yeah she's unhinged yeah she, he's like i'm like getting out of there yeah like, i'm she's getting out of there oh, and so because he's like give me my phone so i can run for my life he got in trouble see but He's a movie, like, you're an actor. You could have got bought a whole new phone. You should have just left the phone at that point. Like, why why escalate the situation? If you know she's holding on to your phone and she's angry at you and you've been with her for I don't know how long, at, certain, at, at one point you understand how she is when she's upset. So if she's not going to give you the phone, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm going to just simply walk away and then get myself a new phone and have this phone deactivated because then you have no access. What if you shot a movie on his phone? Well, baby, it's back on iCloud. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. I don't know what to tell use you. Your backups. Use your backups. Backups, you know? <laughs> you know what? Or use a good old flash drive. Put it in the flash drive. Have it saved onto the computer. So what are your thoughts about this, Jen? I wasn't there. Uh, I'll just give that you... That wasn't you? I'll give you an example of one person I know who's in the entertainment field, and I can tell you he does this to multiple women. Uh, maybe me included, but it never happened. Is some people... So we don't know who's guilty, but sometimes... Someone seems like the victim, but they're really the one causing all the problems. Because I, I, I have heard a story of someone who has been chased, uh, attempted stabbing, uh, had the cops called on him. Uh, you know, really, it sounds like this person is really abused by women. But then years later, things come out. Oh, he's like raping people and punching people and, you know, abusing them. Of course, the women are going to retaliate. And I have, you know, personal stories in my family, people I know, a lot of men or women, you know, women go to jail, or I can tell the story of a, a family friend who had a competition with someone I know, whose wife, whose ex-wife is crazier? 
Well, the guy won because he ended up killing his ex-wife. So who's the aggressor? Is she the aggressor that's causing him or is he retaliating? You know, uh, reactive abuse, it's called psychologically. Mm -hmm. So we don't know if it's reactive abuse or who started. And honestly, they're probably both guilty. That's my that's my end of the thought. So that's why takes two to tango. There's probably mental illness in both of them because you don't stay in a relationship with someone when all this is going on if you're not a little cracked or monetarily dependent on the guy or something. So they're both probably whacked. Yeah, they're whacked. They're whacked. Okay. Yeah, if someone's crazy, you walk away if you're sane. What she said. All right, so for the last bit of news, from the, I wasn't there. From the editor insert uh, song here department, cool. um, according to reports, the list of the top 10 most pirated streaming shows of 2023 has been released. Now, um, what do you think would be a, a good, you watch, you don't even watch streaming shows, do you? <laughs> that silence means no. You're saying she doesn't watch Netflix or Hulu or anything? Oh no, I do. So that's that's not, not if you not if you illegally stream stuff. Oh, what do you watch that's on streaming? TV shows and whatnot. Oh, so I watch a lot of Korean dramas. Korean oh, dramas. Well, that's not. They didn't make the list. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a that's that's a dang darn shame. <laughs> um, I don't. Yeah, a lot of my are Korean. Po- Korean yeah. That's you need a list of oh, no, yeah, I do. I want. Okay, so there's Vincenzo. Okay. Um, that wasn't my that good. Vincenzo wasn't your. Vincenzo? Vincenzo? Wait, Pachenko with the like the. Vincenzo machine. is what I'm saying. Oh, Vincenzo. 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 How, do spell, how do you spell it for listeners? Oh, baby, my spelling is not that great. It is V I N. Okay, no, I haven't seen that one. C E N Z O, I okay. believe. Cool. Okay. Don't, Where do we watch don't it? cancel me if I'm wrong. Um, you can watch it on Netflix. Thank you. Um, Vincenzo, there's My Hollow. If you're into romance, that one was cute. Okay. Um, my Hollow? Yeah, it's like my, yeah, H O L O. Okay. Then there's a, um, I say one class. How do you spell that? I T E W O N class. Then there's, there's so many. We got three. Vincenzo's oh. making a list. No, because uh, someone else, just like you, passionately told me to watch and I never did and I didn't get a list so here I can try again thank you no problem <laughs> enlighten so, me <laughs> um my demon Ooh, that one my let me demon. tell you that's the one I'm watching right now <laughs> all right well cool. right. so anyway, <laughs> anyway. the other person that told me it even talks like you and kind of even has your mannerisms and they, she's obsessed with Korean dramas and she's not Korean she's so, far from Korean they're like the way their drama is just crazy in their oh. romance it'll have you delusional it really have you thinking love is like so like i want my men to treat me like yes. this and like fight for me like this but in reality it's not like that you're okay. getting you can make it like that. i mean in your head delusional again no that, no real no. no let's if we're being no. honest no not in okay. this day and age no. okay interesting no okay. dating no <laughs> So the most pirated movie of 2023 <laughs> uh, would be Ted Lasso, uh, Gen Z, which is based off of The Boys. Which <gasps> of have you watched The Boys? I have not watched The Boys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you need to watch The Boys. Tulsa King, mm-hmm. Monarch, which I have been watching. That's the no. Godzilla, uh, Kurt Russell show. Silo, which was really good. Um, it's about... Um, the world where has everybody's living in a shower that's underneath the ground, and to oh. go outside, they don't know why they have to go outside. But it's like uh, a good political commentary on how life is and how the allegory of decay that you only know what's in front of you, but what's actually really happening around them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Secret Evasion, which was the uh, Samuel Jackson Marvel one, was number five. Ahsoka, which is the Star Wars one, at number four. My cousin got me into that one. Um, yeah. Loki, that which would be number three. Loki's good, so I didn't watch the new season, though. The Mandalorian, which is number two, and the most pirated streaming show of 2023 was The Last of Us, based on the video game of the same. Oh, name. I saw part of that, yeah. Oh, did, were you and when I was watching it, I said it's a zombie movie, and the person next to me said, no, it's a gay it's a gay story. I said, no, it's zombie. He said, no, it's gay. And I, was, I said, all right, so this is what we saw on TV. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a zombie, it's zombies, but the guy thought it was gay. I swear, I swear, I swear, it's happened. So that's it for the news. It's actually gay and zombies. So that's it for the news. So we're going to take a quick break in front of our live studio audience. Woo! At the East Meadow Public Library, and we'll be right back with more It Came From the Radio. Wow, I can't 
Everybody in the Todd McFarland, the Rebecca Spawn comic series, and if you're looking for any kind of cool conversation about creators, about entertainment, about all that good stuff, you go to the Cape from the radio. You're looking for the great spot. This is Quentin Flinner, I'm the other boys that you know him for. So, Tim Hall, and Ryan Flinner, and you're listening to Came From The Radio. Stick around, come on back. Hey, Tim, you guys want to come on stage? Yeah, we want to hear you. Yeah, we want to hear and I am WWE Hall of Famer Jerry the King Lawler, and guess what you're listening to? You're listening to It Came From The Radio! Hi, this is Amy Jo Johnson, writer-director from the film Space Between, and you're listening to It Came From The Radio. Me Grimlock having fun on the game came from the radio. Me Greg Berger also. Me have, me have. Ah, me have, me have. Everybody is on Nick Farland of the Rookie Shedding Spawn comic series. And if you're looking for any kind of... And we are back. Welcome back to the King of the Rail. If you're going to make up fun, you will of course speaking. We are here in front of a live studio audience at East Mill Public Library. Woo! I'm here with L Man Jenny Feldy. Hello. And I'm here with our special guest who's going to be talking to with and about with yeah. Allison Kirsch, who's right here, Mohina Jean Pierre. Hi. Now, I have known Mohina for quite some time. Yes. We go way back. Way back. And back then, <laughs> you were not a poet. No. So, what so happened between poet. back then to now? That uh, made you decide to become a poet. And why decide to go the naughty route? The naughty mm -hmm. You keep saying naughty route. It's not only naughty things. It's a right. I, I, I don't see it. A whistle one. One <laughs> that ties and stuff in your thighs. That sounds a little naughty. Um, well, what started me writing was uh, I always loved writing. I had diaries, journals. They said diarrhea, sorry. <laughs> no. I was like, well, that'll lead you to something. <laughs> the bathroom. Definitely, but no, no diarrhea. Um, <laughs> diarrhea. Uh, diarrhea, right. Uh, then I was in creative writing in seventh grade with my teacher, Miss Leahy, and we would always write poetry. That got me into poetry, fell in love with it. One of my best friends, Jenny, Sarah, La Piri, she was a poet. I love her poetry. It's beautiful. Um, my my other friend, other best friend, Tima, she's not here with us, but she does poetry as well. And Where's I, Tima? Tima, she's at work right now, so she couldn't be here with us. Slacker. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't gotta make the money. The money's the motive. And I was dating a poet. You so were dating a poet? I was dating a poet. Did he win you over with his poetry? <laughs> I won't discuss that. <laughs> <laughs> is it in the book? No. But you like his poetry. I definitely, I loved his poetry. And now do you like his poetry? I still love it. It's very yeah. good. I won't, I won't discredit him How for about that. the guy? Mm, I wish him the best. Okay. I'll say that. Listen, this all shapes her writing. These are relevant questions. <laughs> um, but besides that, I was in a rough time. I left my job in March. I wasn't working for a while. Then I got sad. I was very depressed. A lot was going on within the last two years. And I feel like since I had all that time sitting with me, I, I like, it kind of gave me the shove to really go back into writing. And I was talking to God, like I was just crying. I'm like, God, like I'm tired of feeling this pain, this burden and everything. And um, writing was just my source. So I was just typing away. Type away, and before that was um, Zane. I was writing my erotics way before I wrote the poetry, and my and the reason I got into that is because I I like Zane, and I was like I, I was introduced to sex as a young age. Like I wasn't sexually active at a young age. Let's let's get that straight. <laughs> but like I was introduced to sex at a young age, and um my family would have the like my cousin, my aunts would have the book Zane, like uh, Zane's books. And she's an erotic author. Mm -hmm. And so I would like, you know, skip through it. I was a little kid. I wasn't supposed to read it. Mm -hmm. But then, like, fast forward into my, like, early 20s, I'm like, you know, I want to read some erotica. Like, I remember how spicy they were. I'm like, let's, mm -hmm. let's go see what's that about. And lo and behold, I couldn't find any of them. Like, it was hard to walk, get them online. I checked Twitter. I checked Tumblr. Maybe I wasn't too, like, good in, like, the social media aspect of finding it. Mm -hmm. So then I just started writing it myself. And then it started off with me um, sending it to my friends, and st and they would be like, oh, I like it. And you know it's your friend, so you're always thinking like, oh, mm -hmm. you're just like gassing me up. You're, mm -hmm. you're just telling me this because you're my friend. 
But then I would give it to my coworkers, and they would also like it. And then I also gave it to strangers, and they'd be like, oh, my God, this is so good. And I'm like, oh. Mm. So then one day, I'm sitting here, and wait, I... Wait, wait. You were just walking around giving your book of erotica to strangers? <laughs> I wasn't... Get, let's not put it like that, okay? <laughs> hey, check out my book. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't hey, check, hey, out, check out, out my book. Else. It, was, it was just like, oh. <laughs> I was, we would be on the topic of conversation with sex. Me, I could talk about sex. All right, wait, wait. How do you just? Oh, we're just gonna be talking about sex. How does that? Happen? You'd be surprised. Like you could be in a conversation uh -huh. at a bar. Okay, you're drinking, and some, and someone's talking about anything. We have kids here, so I won't say much. But <laughs> how do you think the kids got here? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sex. Too late. No, the stork <laughs> took them. Oh. The stork took them. And <laughs> brought them. FDA wise. Right. Sorry. All right. Years. Okay. Cool. Since we're being honest about it, but yeah. So. You'd be surprised how many people talk about sex and how comfortable, blah, 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 how comfortable they are talking about it. Yeah. So like my mom, too comfortable. Too comfortable? Don't want to hear it. Yeah. My mom, total opposite. Good. Let's switch. <laughs> no, I love my mom. <laughs> um, so we would just talk. They would talk about it, and I'd be like, Yeah, you know, I I would write erotica, and they'd be like, You write erotica? And I'm mm -hmm. just like, Yeah. And I'm like, Oh, you have it? I'm like, Yeah. And I let them read it. Sure enough. They liked it, and I'm like, you know what? It's not too bad. And then I was one day I was sitting with my sister, and we were talking about books and stuff. And I was talking about publishing, and she's like, yeah, you should publish, you know, um, anthology. And I'm like, anthology. And she's just like, yeah, you know, it's a collection of sorts. Mm -hmm. And I had like a whole bunch. I had my poems. Let me tell you, a good way to start writing pain, <laughs> the root of all of it, mm -hmm. heartbreak, depression, mm -hmm. anxiety, all of that, mm -hmm. led me to writing my book. And uh, it just. It became something beautiful. I just like it like that. That's how, that's how it all came. Jumping on what you said, a lot of poets that I know do come from a place of pain and hurt. How were you able to take that and translate it to something that's enjoyable while still maintaining the sense of that pain that you felt? I think it was just the imagery I was painting in my head while I was typing it. I. I'm very, like, in my head, it's just, like, a whole bunch of things. So I would just imagine it, or, like, I would think of a, fa like, I live in a world of fantasy. So in one aspect, in one of the stories, uh, which I want to say seeing again is the last story in my book. And this one is, the the synopsis of it mostly is a girl named, um, named Vanna. And she had, like, she's dating and stuff, but she was out of a relationship, and she starts dating again. She has this one guy that she's, like, kind of into one of her co-workers and this other guy she meets at a party and um while she's dating the co-worker or, or trying to get the co-worker get to know the co-worker she meets this other guy named Shakir and like Shakir kind of wins her over but she's still dating the co-worker and in the midst of it all it's like a little love triangle and she gets to experience love at the same time but there's also like a, a sad ending but I won't ruin it for you guys because you have to read it and order it on Amazon <laughs> And the link will be on the website. I will send it to you. Um, but yeah, and then there's also um, Mona and Rico, which is the first story. And that was, I think in the book, you will like get the sense of um, all, like the, fir the first book, sorry. The first book is more like a active like sex encounter where it's just like sex, 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 right? <laughs> right? And then at the second one, you kind of get the um, the in-depth of emotion of loss. So in that part was like where I was, when I was dealing with my breakup and stuff and what it felt like to me, it felt like a sense of death. Like I was mourning the person that I was once in love with. And then in the last story, you'll get like a set, it's like a combination of sex, but more like, um, I guess where I am now. So each story kind of was like a step in where I was in life. So the first was just like when I was very sexually active. Second was just like I was in love, but I experienced the loss of it. And then the last one is more so lost, love, and lust, love, loss, but also seeking God in that aspect in my relationship with God as well. I had um, a book by my brother's ex-wife mm -hmm. that was basically a story about us. Ooh. It's weird reading it, especially with some sexy parts in it. It was about my brother <laughs> and this girl. Uh -huh. Very awkward. Mm. But it was part of what happened, and you can tell what parts were really happening, what parts were made up. Mm -hmm. How much of you 
because he's mentioned it was part of the breakup and the emotion, mm -hmm. is in these characters and in the story. If you're all your friends reading, it's like, hey, wait a minute, that, no. I know that. No, so my emotions are there, but me personally, no, I'm not in there. So like, you're not no, um, no, I'm not, I'm not Vanna, I'm not. <laughs> but like the feelings she's feeling, I, those are the feelings I felt, or I would imagine myself feeling if I was in that situation. So it's not me per se, but these are, it's just my emotions, it's pure emotions. So how are you able to separate yourself, the person, from your emotions to make it into a new character? Well, based off the experiences I went. So like for like, um, I just go based off of memory and how I felt in that moment. Cause that's who I used, that's who I was in that moment. That's not who I am now. So writing it was just like, oh, that's who I was and that's what I did. Or this is what I would like or what I did like. And I'll just write it down. And I also think of like, what else would other people write? When it came to like um, sex thing or stuff like that, I was very creative. I'm not gonna hold you. So it's just like it all worked out in my favor. <laughs> well, you talked about who you are now, so it leads us to my first question. So on your LinkedIn, because you know, I stalked you on the internet earlier, <laughs> uh, I saw that you reposted who you are becoming is more important than who you've been. So who have you been and who are you becoming? Who have I been? Um... That's a good question, actually. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I only have three. <laughs> Hope you like that one. I, There's not much else. No, I see uh, that. I see that. Okay. Um, who I was, uh, I would say I was an insecure girl back then. I was very lost. I didn't know. I, it's not that I didn't know who I was. Is that I was definitely a people pleaser back then. So I would do whatever it was to get the attention I wanted. Mm -hmm. And who I am now, I think I'm more of a child of God now. I'm definitely connected to more deep rooted in my spiritual, uh, not spirituality, but my religion and mm -hmm. Christianity. Mm -hmm. I'm a sister, paralegal, jack of all trades, truthfully, an author, poet. You say sister, right? Yes. Like a family sister, like a church sister? Both. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Both. Um, I'm a lover girl. Like, I love love. I like the concept of love. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a great quote. Damn, it really got me. Hey, you've got 20 minutes, so <laughs> <laughs> don't rush. Relax. Uh, <laughs> don't relax. Don't it? take out my anxiety. You relax. <laughs> Girl, scrub it off on me right now. Yeah, I might. I might. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Um, well, I can say that she was a bubbly person full of life and energy back then. I still <laughs> am. Still am. So, I still am. So that was who you were, so you're still that same person. Yeah, because I was, I'm also the type of person, I don't let whatever my traumas were, I would never really allow it to affect who I am to other people. Yeah. I would always, I would say I'm very supportive. I'm always there when you need me. Uh, I would, I'm the comforter. I feel like I'm a blanket. So like if I see someone down, I would want to keep them warm and safe and make, give them that safe feeling that I always wanted. You feel me growing up? Thank you. Oh, yeah. Next question, then. She's, she's not there yet. She, she's then she said who she was, oh, but then the rest is. of it says who, who is she, is she now? becoming. Who, who yeah. am I become? So now I'm becoming. Let weird. Finish. <laughs> <laughs> not even married. No. Not even dating. You <laughs> know I am dating. <laughs> no. I oh. <laughs> like, don't, this. don't tell her to do that. Like, come on, Mark. Yeah, relax. Mark. Yeah, let her finish. I want to know who she's becoming. <laughs> uh, who we're coming? I will be New York's bestseller. Nice. Speaking that into existence. Nice. <laughs> um, I don't know who I am right now, but I'm loving every step I take into who I am becoming. I would say that because uh, I used to I like to plan everything, and I realized mm -hmm. with life you can't just plan everything. It's never going to go according to how you plan it. So mm -hmm. I'm just learning to. I, w I don't want to say roll with the punches, just go with the flow in this aspect of life and just accepting whatever comes at me with open arms. Hmm. I'm flexible. What is it? The strongest man in the room is the most flexible man in the room. Mm. Yes and no. You got to stretch first. Get up there. And <laughs> <laughs> you just can't do it. How old are you? Oh, 29. I'm 39. You'll be fine. What? Really? Yeah. I'll be 40 in September. It's not that old. I didn't think you were. At 29, I was a freaking moron. I'm still a freaking moron. Look at that. <laughs> so let's go to the next question. This okay. is about me. We're all about you. Uh, why, if you answered this already, I'm sorry. Sometimes I have dementia at 39 years old. Why was it so important to write this book? 
Mm, I didn't think it was important to be honest okay. with you. I would say my sister and my friends and family gave me the really the strength to push forward with it. They were just like, you should do it. And I think for me, I like new. I, I like to do take on new projects and do certain things. Like before, prior to this, I was modeling. Never did modeling before, mm -hmm. and I was just like, you know what? I want to try it. I did it, and I liked it. And now I was like, okay. If I'm a writer, I like writing, and people <laughs> like my writing, let me just make a book and see how it works out. I'm not going to hold you. It was very scary. It still is to this day. Like, right yeah. now, shaking. Yes, it is. Because it's just like, it's, you're vulnerable, and everyone gets to read your your most inner thoughts, your emotions, and everything. And they can say whatever they want about it, and you just have to True. go with it. And um, I'm, much, I'm sensing it. I'll keep yeah. it up with you. So it was just like, you know, doing this was like, okay, once you put this out, that's it. Like, this is out for the world to True. see. And it's not just the confinement of your friends, workers, and some strangers. This mm -hmm. is like... And yeah. modeling, too. Oh, yeah. Well, modeling, yeah. Um, that was more so to be more comfortable with my body. I think yeah. a lot of times in the world, especially for females or women in general, mm -hmm. it's hard because, like, you have so many rules or construction, like social constructs, that, mm -hmm. like, constructs, that um, tell you how to look, what to be like, and... I got tired of hearing people telling mm -hmm. me, oh, you'd be better looking if you did this or if you were like this. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, you know what? I want to be more comfortable with who I am. So I went into modeling. Oh, that's a good one. Right? I did. That's why you went into it? To be more comfortable? Yeah. Interesting. I did um, I did some nude. I did some board, like lingerie modeling. I did hmm. even um, a Black History Month one, too. Hmm. I, nude? Nude Black History? Oh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> I've never seen that. <laughs> no. That would be groundbreaking. That, you know what? That could be I'll something. I'll get the team together. You want to shoot it. You know what? We could work on something. Think about it. Actually I know. like that Nude Black History. <laughs> <laughs> this is her idea, though. I mean, it's like a little clap, but, you know. You know what? We can say it. Think about it. I'll think about it. Probably. And then you can, you know, have someone who does voiceover for you, <laughs> reading your book, you know, to the pictures. <laughs> you know what? Our twin flames burn holes through the ozone layer. And then we have a picture of you. And maybe we zoom in on some naughty bits. You know what? <laughs> hey, I'm a producer more than I'm not a writer. Really. You know what? Think about it. I'll think about it. You're a model too. You might as well mix it all together. <laughs> mix it all together and you know that it's the best of both. Right? Yeah, use your skills. Yeah, yeah I'm going to talk with the big guy. I'm going to talk to God first about that. Perfect. What he thinks about that. <laughs> and a not new Black History Month, but with, you know, dinosaurs. Dinosaurs? Okay. I don't know. I'm just trying to be a no. <laughs> Um But yeah, and then... um. So yeah, writing came in, and I was just like, you know, it's a new project. It's not something I've done before. I've never published a book. So I was just like, and the process of it mm. was was this, was a bit stressful because going back and forth with the publishers and then editing and then um, asking me, like, do I like this? And I'm just like, no, I don't like it that way. Like, let's go back to the original mm. way. It was a trip, but it was worth it. I can't wait to do my second book, but. As a model, uh -huh. why? Or is it this not, or is this you on the cover? It's not book? me. Actually, my sister helped me, oh, yeah. and my sister and my uh, best friend Tristan, you know Tristan, um, they helped me with the cover. So my, uh, you know, the title says La Vise Yon <laughs> so life is a dance. So mm -hmm. I took dancing since I was little, since I was, I want to say, two or three years old, I was oh, dancing. Wow. Yes. Um, so dance has always been a part of my life, and it's also... A saying my grandmother would always talk about like if you don't dance you're an idiot like mm -hmm. life is about dancing and enjoying it right. so um we got the ballerina her favorite color my grandmother Ina well Anna that's what we say and her favorite color was blue so the background was blue um the heart because of you know life you don't have life without a heart mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um the bleeding my sister added on to that and so <laughs> <laughs> that and it all came together and then Tristan just added the roses and I think it was just a nice final touch to it so why are you so tiny in the back oh yeah that, <laughs> because yeah. I don't want to be the main focus the main focus is my book mm. okay but you are your book right it is you you said it yourself this is the raw version of you but right. in your but emotions. I want people to focus more on the writing and not the picture of the author. Well, we're gonna have to because I can't even see you. So <laughs> the writing is definitely taking center stage. And that's the whole point. Because if you really want to see me, you could you could Google me. You'll find me. <laughs> <laughs> you said you have a relationship with God. Yes. How did that affect what came into the printed work? 
in the printed word. Um, shockingly, I know people when people think of like God, it's just like, oh, you can't talk about sex and all of that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. No, you can. Like, you mm -hmm. can have these conversations with him. You can talk yeah. to him. Some people, like, if you ever see me driving in the car and you see me going back and forth, that's me and God. Like, it's not me being on the phone screaming at somebody. Like, I'm talking to him. Yeah. So, when I asked him, like, you know, how do I help, like, how do I deal with my emotions? Like, how do I get over this hurt and stuff? He told me to write. And I wrote. And I wrote in my book. And I wrote, I typed it all up. And that's how I got my book. So, like, when people try to, like, oh, you're a Christian or you can't talk about these things, that's mm -hmm. a lie. It's a myth. Mm -hmm. Don't believe it. You can. You'd be surprised. So now that the emotions are in the printed word, mm -hmm. are they gone from you or are they still there? Hmm. You know, actually, no, they're gone. I don't really feel like those feelings I was feeling, I don't have them. I think right, that's, I, that's why I believe writing is such an importance mm. for people because, like, once you write it down, like, that's it. Like, the emotions, it, it could be there sometimes, like, it'll linger, but it's not as effective as it was in that moment she was writing it. Like, you ever... If you have, like, if you had a diary and, like, you read back to your diary when you were, like, probably 13, 14, you're reading it and you're like, wow. Like, it, <laughs> I remember going through that thinking that this was, like, the biggest thing in my mm -hmm. life. And now, 29, I'm looking at it like, oh, wow. Like, I don't even understand why I felt that way. Like, this is it's crazy. <laughs> it's right. funny. I yeah. think I've mentioned this before. I used to work at Blockbuster for 10 years. And one day I was working there, and there was this little kid, probably five years old with his dad, looking at movies. And he said, oh my god, it's whatever this movie was. I've waited all my life to see this. Oh my god. And the dad's like, all your life? So <laughs> yeah. in his world, that was it. Oh, yeah. wow. So now that you've expanded and grown, when you put your emotions in there, and now you're going to have a problem, I would think, to have, you don't have those emotions again to make another book. Mm. So what are you going to do now? Are you going yeah, go to go around looking to get, problems, around to get problems. you hurt and, and <laughs> hurt. break up with somebody else and you're like, <laughs> you're the next book? Like, what's, what's going on? Yeah, just date people just for material. First of all, I didn't mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're going to so, be my book, okay? No, um... I didn't need them, I didn't need those emotions to write the eroticas. Like, I was always writing my eroticas regardless. Um, I think... It what pushed me was just the emotions of being hurt, where it's just like, I have to focus on something else. So I focused on writing a book, and that's what I did. But I don't have to date someone to write another book. I'm already in the works of working on another book, so this is, and I'm not, <laughs> I'm not in a relationship with anybody. I'm not hurt. I'm, I'm, I'm happy where I am right now. All right, so I have to, I have to ask the obvious question, which I'm wondering about. Mm -hmm. When you're writing the naughty stuff, uh -huh. where, where does that come from? Is it personal experience? Is this stuff you've seen? Is this stuff you'd like to have done? How does that come, and how do you translate it onto the page to make it visual for everybody else who's reading it? Because, like I said, when I read the other one, I was like, "Oh my God, this is I can't I can't read this about <laughs> these people I know. I, I don't need to read no more." Um, how do you do that, and how do you maintain that balance? Because it is a balance. I don't think it's a balance for me per se. It was just a like it was a mixture again like. In a and I call sure him balance. Okay, in a quote of <laughs> Hannah Montana, you mix it all together and you get the best of both worlds. So, that's what she said. Yeah, you never heard the theme song. You get the best. No, I'm old. I'm almost forty years old. I don't know how to like that. Like, oh my god. Sorry, but sorry, I like sorry. it. I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to learn about comedy well, you drama. Get the best like best of both worlds. Yeah. I know. Mix I don't want I don't want to. Okay. No. Okay. No. 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 No, I got Molly. Yeah, I got Molly. Yeah, yeah no. That's um, I <laughs> but it's the theme song. Just listen to it. It's a Marco Hold. It's a banger. Um, <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, but for me, some of it I experienced, and some I would I wanted to experience. Okay. I would say. Which fantasies? Fantasies again in my head. Fantasy like a big door fantasy. Like when you grow up reading Zane. Like, my yeah. book compared to Zane, so you know about Zane. No. No? She no, I never really know. read erotica. I really, I read all health, I read really all health um, nonfiction. I wrote health guidebooks. I'm just a health nerd when I'm reading. Health, 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 oh, okay. health, health, psychology, health. Okay. That's it, wow. yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. No, nothing really <laughs> fictional. Zane, 
She was at my wedding. Oh yeah, get on that. Um, Respect. Very. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm celibate though, so is this gonna be a problem? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm celibate too, girl. So we in the same boat. Okay. But you, you might, you might get a little tickle here and there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You know, it's healthy. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> but. Some of it, uh, yeah, a lot of it's a more, it's more, my book's mostly fantasy, but some, okay. did, I did experience it. I won't say which story, though, but, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're at social media time. Uh -huh. so where can people find out more about you besides just Googling your name, which is a unique name, I have to say. It's uh, a combination of my mom, Monet, my godfather, Harold, that's where the H came from, and Ina oh. is my grandmother. I was wondering. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Where can people find the book? The book is on Amazon, but I would just send you the link. It's like weird. For some reason, you can't you... say I'll send you the link when you're on a radio. Well, you're you're right. People... Well, I'm talking to you where you can post it on the website so they have access to it. Okay. But if they also want to, they can find me on Facebook or on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I'll, well, my is Instagram it page. Is under a different name? Or you're no. trying to pull teeth getting this information it's out of you? not pulling the teeth. It's just. You'll, it's the link, like you'll find the link in the bios and stuff of my pages. I also have a um, Instagram page for the book. It's called Abby Seyon Dance, and you can find it there. And yeah, there's Facebook, Instagram. And the Instagram spelling is L A V I S E Y O N D A N S. Yes. Listeners, play that back. <laughs> Now, you were kind enough to uh, raffle off a, uh, a book for our live studio audience. Super great. Woo! Now, do I have everybody's other half of the raffle ticket? Some of you have two tickets. Everybody has one ticket that's not in two pieces. Cool. Making sure you have a second piece. Give that out to me. I can get it all in here. So everybody only has one piece of the raffle ticket, right? Everybody has one raffle ticket. All right. So what are you going to give away? You're going to give away a copy of your book? Yes. Call uh, the number, please. No looking. <laughs> Just get one. Don't grab the whole pile. <laughs> get one. Okay, I'm trying to, you got you to gotta speak to God first. All right, there you go. Who is the winner? <laughs> Three, seven, one, one. Two five. Oh my Three, God! Seven, two, five. Yeah. Stop. Stop. We're all winners. Yeah, we're all winners, but everybody wins at the East Meadow Public Library. So I want to make sure everybody knows that you come to the East Meadow Public Library. That's www.eastmeadow.info. We have a new show every month. Um, and the East Middle Park Library has other tons and tons of programming that they have at the library, and it's all for free. So make sure you guys go to www.eastmiddle.info. Now, L Man Jenny Feldy, who ran away, is supposed to have her final thoughts, so I'll go with your final thoughts first. You heard enough from me. <laughs>